Hi, I'm Larry from North Florida Communications, and today we're going to discuss SIP trunking. The purpose of this video is not to go into a whole lot of technical details, but to give a basic understanding of how SIP trunking works so business owners and business managers can decide whether it's right for their business or not. For the sake of our discussion, SIP trunking is a telephone service delivered via the internet. SIP trunks can be delivered by other means, but the internet is the most common delivery method. SIP trunks are provided by an ITSP instead of the traditional phone company. ITSP stands for Internet Telephony Service Provider. There are several reasons why businesses consider switching to SIP trunks, but one of the main reasons is cost. You can save 50% easily of the cost of traditional phone service. In case you're wondering, SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. In order to use SIM trunking, you'll need a good solid internet connection, a telephone system capable of using SIP trunks, and service from an ITSP. And something a lot of people don't consider, a router that can prioritize SIP trunking. The type of internet connection you'll need depends on the amount of traffic you'll want to pass and the service providers in your area. A T1 is a digital circuit that has a speed of 1.5 megabits per second. That speed is relatively slow by today's standards, but a T1 has some advantages. The main advantage is that a T1 is a dedicated connection. Unlike cable and DSL, the T1 service provider guarantees that you'll always have the 1.5 meg speed. A T1 is also synchronous meaning that the upload speed is the same as the download speed. Another option is DSL, generally provided by the local telephone company. DSL speeds vary depending on how far you're located from the phone company's equipment and how much you want to pay. DSL download speeds can be 3, 5, 10, or even 20 megabits per second. Unlike a T1, DSL is asynchronous, which means the upload speed is not the same as the download speed. You may have a 10 meg download speed, but your upload speed will be typically less than 1 meg. When considering DSL for SIP trunking, the upload speed is just as important as the download speed. A third option is cable internet. Cable speeds are typically faster than DSL with download speeds that can reach 100 meg. Upload speeds are typically higher than DSL. Some might even go up to 10 meg for the high end service. We typically recommend cable internet if a connection is available in your area. Cable usually provides the best service for the price. There are other internet options available in some areas, but a T1, DSL, or cable are the most common. You'll need to have a phone system that is capable of receiving SIP trunking. You may also use a SIP to analog gateway for older telephone systems. A SIP gateway is a device that will break SIP trunking into individual lines that replicate POTS lines. POTS is an acronym for Plain Old Telephone Service, just like you get from the traditional phone company. A gateway will allow you to keep an existing phone system that will not natively accept SIP trunks, saving money on an upgrade. However, you will lose a lot of flexibility of SIP trunking by using a gateway. To get the best use from SIP trunks, you want to get a phone system capable of directly integrating with them. Most manufacturers have these type of systems, but our company refers to LG IPEX Voice over IP phone system. Will any router work? No, and you shouldn't scrimp in this area. A router is your gateway to the internet. Your router directs traffic to and from your network to the internet. In my opinion, when people move to SIP trunks, one of the biggest mistakes they make is using a cheap router. Cheap routers are simply a big no-no. They're mass produced at the lowest cost with very little processing power and very little, if any, prioritization of traffic. I would suggest that if you can buy the router in a big box store, it's not good enough for your business, much less for SIP trunking. You want to invest in a higher end router that has plenty of processing power and can provide quality of service. Quality services simply refer to as QoS. And QoS is defined as the ability to provide different priority to different applications, users, or data flows 
or to guarantee a certain level of performance to a data flow. When using SIP trunking, it is critical that the voice traffic go into the internet is prioritized over all other traffic. If your email arrives a second late, it's not a big deal. On the other hand, if a voice packet arrives one second late, your conversation has just become garbled. A properly configured router will use QoS to provide all voice traffic priority over everything else so that your conversations remain smooth and clear. Just as important as buying a quality router is the need for someone who knows how to set it up. You'd be surprised at how many IT techs have a difficult time with this. What kind of router is best? That's a question that will be answered differently by many people. Cisco, SonicWall, WatchGuard, and others make some top-notch routers. At North Florida Communications, one of our favorite routers is an open source product called PFSense. We found that PFSense works very well with voice over IP traffic. Since it's an open source product, you do not have to purchase the software and can use the money saved to invest in some good hardware. For more information on PFSense, visit pfsense.org. So we've talked about the type of internet connection that you can use, what type of phone system to use, and that you need to use a high quality router. So what else do you need to, in order to use SIP trunking? An internet telephony service provider, again referred to it as an ITSP. There are some good and some not so good ITSPs out there, so choose wisely. Another option is to use a broker. North Florida Communications act as a broker for many of our customers. We buy wholesale service from several different ITSPs and then route them accordingly to our customers' equipment. This allows us to do the technical work that most of our customers do not wish to do themselves. And it gives our customers a single point of contact for their telecom needs. The ITSP will in fact become your phone company. Your phone numbers will come from the ITSP. Inbound and outbound calls will go through the ITSP. So let's say someone calls you from another business. Once they dial your number, their telephone company will connect to your ITSP. Your T ITSP will send the call to your, your IP address over the internet. Your router will identify the incoming traffic as a SIP call and will then send it to your phone system. Your phone system will then recognize the number that it was dialed and send it to the proper phone or phones. Let's look at the process in reverse and see what happens when you make an outgoing call. You dial a number on your telephone which is processed through your phone system. The phone system takes your analog voice and converts it to digital packets designed to be sent across the network. Those packets are then sent to your router. Your router has been properly configured to prioritize all voice traffic coming from and going to the phone system. The router takes the voice packet, marks it to be sent to your ITSP via the internet. The packet is then routed over the internet to the ITSP. The ITSP then connects back to the public switch telephone network and sends the call to the proper landline or cell phone. Why is it called SIP trunking instead of SIP lines? Trunks have more features than lines and operate in a different manner. Plain old telephone service, or POTS lines, have one phone number per line. Each line comes in from a pair of wires from the phone company. For example, if your phone number is 555-1234, when someone calls that number, it is sent via the public service telephone network, again the PSTN, to your phone company's local central office. The call is then sent over a pair of copper wires to your building and goes to your phone system. Your phone system has been programmed to send all calls coming in on that line to a certain destination. In our example here, it's going to Timmy. Now let's say that your manager Shirley needs her own phone number. You've had an extra line added with the number 555-1256. If someone needs to call Shirley, they dial that number and then the call goes to your phone company and it's sent via another pair of wires to your phone system and then that calls around to Shirley. So with POTS lines, you need a pair of cables for each number or line that you have. If you want four individuals or four different departments to have a private number, you'll need four separate lines. 
If you also want to have four lines in a hunt group for general business calls, you'll need four more lines. Since each line takes a cable pair, you've now occupied a total of eight cable pairs or 16 wires from the phone company to your building. Those wires cost money to install and maintain. And that's one of the reasons that SIP trunking can be cheaper than traditional phone service. Now let's take a look at the same scenario using SIP trunks. Remember, SIP trunks have more features than lines and operate in a different manner. SIP trunks use DID numbers. DID stands for direct inward dial. DI numbers are not line dependent. They do not need a unique pair of wires from the phone company for each number that you have. Instead, they are sent with signaling information so that your phone system knows what number was dialed. For instance, let's say someone calls Timmy's private number and your company is using SIP trunks. Once they dial 555-1234, that number is routed from their phone company to your ITSP, who then sends the call via the internet to your phone system. Your phone system is then able to tell that the calling party dialed 555-1234, and that's been programmed to go to Timmy's phone. Now, someone else needs to call Shirley. They call her private number, 555-1256. That call is routed to your ITSP, who sends the call via the internet to your phone system. Then that phone system routes that call to Shirley. Your phone system may only be configured to accept four SIP trunks. You can have as many DID numbers as you want routed over those four SIP trunks. For instance, using our previous example, you can have four direct numbers for key employees and a main number for your business. Those calls can all be routed over the same four SIP trunks. Now in this scenario, you're limited to four concurrent calls, but you don't have to pay for an expensive line for each number that you want to have. You just have one pipe, the internet, for these two calls to come in from. Now let's take a look at something else we can do with SIP trunks. Let's say your main office is located in Jacksonville, but you want to have a presence in other cities. Perhaps you have employees who work in those cities, but you want all calls rather to the Jacksonville office. You would have a DID number for local calls coming from the Jacksonville market. Those calls would be sent to your ITSP, who would then send the calls via the internet to your phone system. The phone system will be programmed to display Jack's call whenever somebody calls that number. With SIP trunking, we can assign phone numbers from different cities. So the further our example, let's say our, your company also has a Gainesville number. Whenever somebody calls Gainesville locally, the call is routed to your ITSP, who sends it to your phone system. The phone system sends the call to the proper phones and displays Gainesville in the LCD display so that your employees know where the call is from and how to handle it properly. We can also assign numbers from different states. You could have a number in Atlanta that is sent to you just like your in-state and local calls are. You can also have a number from a different country. Perhaps your company does business in the Caribbean. Someone one in the Bahamas could call your company from a local Nassau number and that call will be routed accordingly. Let's look at numbers for advertisements. Another good use of DID numbers is the ability to see which ads are working. With the low cost of DID numbers, we can assign different numbers to each ad campaign. For example, let's say 555-2000 is the number that appears on your website. Whenever someone dials that number, the call is routed accordingly and the LCD screen on your phone displays website. Let's assume that your business still uses the Yellow Pages. We could assign another number, such as 555-2001, for that ad. Whenever someone finds you in the Yellow Pages and gives you a call, you'll know from the display of the phone that they found you in the Yellow Pages. Perhaps you also have a radio ad. A third number could be assigned for that campaign and you can know exactly who's calling. DID numbers are cheap, 
but advertising is not. So SIP trunking with the ID numbers can help you see where your marketing dollars are working best. Other advantages for SIP trunking include low costs for all types of calls, including local, long distance, and international. New phone numbers can be often acquired in the same day. There's no need to wait for the, the phone company to process your order, assign an installer who then has to work new cable pairs to your building, and then wait for your phone vendor to connect those lines. It's all done through programming. 911 numbers are assigned on a per DID basis. So if you have remote offices who are tied back to your phone system, their 911 calls will be associated to the proper address instead of the location of your phone system. Now, if you've ever had to move across the street or across town, you probably know what a headache it can be to get the phone company to move your lines. With SIP trunking, you'll just need to make sure you have an adequate interconnect, internet connection working at your new location. Your system can then be relocated without having to wait on the local carrier. Your technician will just do a few programming changes and everything will be right back up. Now, what happens if the internet goes down? It would be the same as if the cable feed in your current phone service was cut. You wouldn't have any service. Your DID numbers, however, can be individually assigned to automatically forward to another destination if your phone system is not reachable via the internet. Calls can then be routed to a cell phone or back to a backup POTS line, a regular phone line from the phone company. Depending on how critical your phone lines are to your business, you may consider having a backup internet service from another provider. With the low prices of internet service now, backup internet is definitely worth considering if it's available in your area. A backup is important not only for SIP trunking, but for your other internet needs as well. Today's modern office is more and more dependent on the internet for many things. You want to get service from two separate providers, like the cable company and the phone company. You'll need a router that can accept two internet, or WAN, connections and have it properly configured. In this example, calls would normally be routed to go through the cable company's internet service. If something goes wrong with the cable company's service, calls can then be automatically routed to the IP address of your telephone company's internet service. Calls will continue to be routed through the backup internet service until the primary internet service is restored. Calls will then be routed back to the primary connection automatically. This setup makes SIP trunking more fault tolerant than traditional phone lines. With traditional phone service, you would simply have to wait until a repair technician restores your service. Or if you're lucky, someone from the phone company may be able to call for your main number to your cell phone. That does it for this presentation. I hope you've learned a little bit about SIP trunking and the benefits it can provide for your business. If you're in the North Florida area, Please let us know if we can help you with your communications needs.